Hi, I'm Brian Parks from Belimo Technical Support. Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to use the near field communication feature that's on the Belimo PR actuators. And specifically today, we're going to talk about the PRBUP-3, which is the on-off actuator. Using the near field communication, you're able to go into the actuator in the field and using a smartphone, you're able to access the programming and make changes in the field without having to hook up to a computer or to a laptop. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. On the top of the actuator, there's a little symbol here, NFC, and obviously that stands for near field communication. And the reason it's on here on the label is underneath here is the chip that we use for programming the actuator. Something that's interesting is if I have an Android phone I can access the near field communication on the PR actuator without any adapters. The Android phones have the near field communication available and active. If I'm using an Apple product, if I have an iPhone, the near field communication is not activated. And so in order to use the near field communication with an iPhone, Belimo has created this device called the Zip BT NFC. And basically what it does is it will communicate with the actuator through near field communication and then it'll communicate to your iPhone using the Bluetooth method. Let's go ahead and show you how to use it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I've taken and I've charged this up. I'm going to turn it on. It'll start with a blinking green light. What I'm going to do is there's a hole in the center of the Bluetooth adapter. I'm going to put it over the near field communication symbol and it's going to begin to blink a little bit uh, quicker. I'm going to take my iPhone and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the Belimo Assistant app. The Belimo Assistant app is a free application. You can get it in the Google Play Store or you can get it in the App Store. Download it to your phone. When we're using the iPhone, you're going to go ahead and make sure that your Bluetooth is enabled. So let's go ahead and access the programming on this actuator and show you how it works. I'm going to start with the iPhone and then afterwards I'll move to the Android and I'll show you how to use that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the Belimo Assistant app. And we'll just wait for that to open up. And because I'm using an iPhone, the first thing that it does, it comes up and it says it's waiting for the converter and switch on tech support or select another one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select manually and what's going to happen is any of the Bluetooth adapter, adapters that are turned on and within range of the iPhone, it's going to give me a list. So what I've done is I've, go ahead and, uh, I've gone ahead and I've named this Bluetooth adapter ABC. I'm going to select it and I'm going to connect. You'll know that the phone is communicating because the light in the Bluetooth adapter will begin to blink blue during the time that it's uh, communicating with the actuator. So this is the screen that I see uh, when I access the near field communication features. And so right away, I can see that I've got a PRBUP-3-T, and uh, we know that's correct. Uh, I'm looking at the top here. We'll start at the top. It says overview. And we have named this actuator uh, Tech S for tech support. Underneath that, uh, there is a unique identifier. And what that is, is that is a unique serial code uh, that is for this specific actuator. So if we take a look uh, to the right of the word overview, I see the Bluetooth symbol that tells me that uh, the app is working through the Bluetooth. Uh, the next thing I see is I see a diagram of the valve and the actuator. And to the right of that, I've got an orange exclamation point. And what that's telling me is that the actuator is not powered. So one of the cool features about near field communication is that the actuator doesn't have to have power. And this actuator isn't even wired to a power source. Uh, and I'm still able to go in and access the programming of the near field communication. Now. The important thing is when I go to write the changes to the chip on the near field communication, they won't actually take effect until I power up the actuator uh, and then it'll uh, go ahead and make the changes to the programming. The very next 
uh, line that we see down here where it says valve position, uh, it says uh, has a little dash mark with a percentage. Again, because there's no electricity or no power going to the actuator, we don't know what the valve position is. Uh, it is already pre-programmed for a runtime of 30 seconds. And again, the voltage source has that orange exclamation point, uh, meaning we don't know uh, what the voltage is. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is, because I want to go in and I want to reprogram the actuator, I'm going to click in the upper right corner and it says converter, settings, and send configuration. Let's go ahead and start with the converter. So the very first thing is it's telling me that I'm connected to the ABC. Again, we, we just gave this a name. If I wanted to, uh, I could take and I could change the name in the lower right. I can uh, select edit, rename, and we've named it ABC, and I'm just gonna add DEF, okay. Now the name change comes up. And the next thing is uh, in the edit settings, I could disconnect from this Bluetooth adapter uh, or I could rename it again. And I'm just gonna click cancel because we don't wanna make any more changes. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on the upper right, settings. And in these settings, I can change the units. I could change volumetric airflow and uh, you have a couple of different settings down here. Uh, we're gonna go to cubic feet per minute. And uh, for water flow, I'm gonna go to gallons per minute. And pressure, we could do uh, pascals or we could do inches of water column, which I'm gonna change. And then temperature, it's set for Celsius and I'm gonna change it over to Fahrenheit. And then the very important thing that we wanna do is we wanna select expert mode. If I select expert mode, I am now able to go in and I am able to reprogram the actuator. And it's already set on expert mode. Uh, release codes, these, this would be information that comes from Belimo from the programming group. And uh, there are zero uh, enabled release codes. Info about the Belimo Assistant app. And it says that at the filming of this video, we're running uh, Belimo Assistant version 4.2.4. Uh, one, and uh, also you can contact us at uh, www.belimo.com, and then there is the end user agreement. So that's all the information we need out of there, and I'm going to click back, and I'm going to click back again, and that's going to take me back to the overview screen. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into, uh, I'm going to touch the gear on the bottom, and I'm going to come into the configuration settings. So again, we see at the top that uh, the name of it is Tech S. It has the unique serial number for the actuator. Um, I am controlling this by Y1, Y2, uh, and override controls not enacted. So location, uh, I've named it Tech Support. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it Training. I type it in. If you notice, the word training now turns from uh, black to orange, and uh, that means that it hasn't been written to the actuator yet. And at the top, it's blinking now orange that says write required, but I'm not done reprogramming, so I'm not gonna write to the actuator yet. Uh, the next thing is it's set for the runtime of 30 seconds. Now, I've selected this runtime, and if you notice on the very next line below it, uh, it says 30 to 120. And what that's telling you is the fastest runtime you could have is 30 seconds and the longest runtime is 120. And so I have to enter a number uh, from 30 to 120. And so I'm just gonna change this to a 50 second runtime. I'm done, again, it's orange. I have to uh, program, uh, I have to write to the chip in order for that programming to take effect. Max position, it's set for 33% open. I'm gonna select that. The minimum is 33% and the maximum is 100%. And so let's change that to 80%. I'm gonna click done. Again, it's orange. It hasn't been written to the, uh, the NFC chip. And then the valve settings are regular. And this uh, would be if, if I buy this actuator and it's not on a Belimo supplied valve or a, a, an L-series valve, uh, I'm gonna select regular. 
If I order this from the factory and it comes on an eight or a 10 inch L series, and then it would have already come programmed for a DN250 or DN200. Um, again, this is not on a, gonna go on an L series. So I'm gonna leave it on regular. That stays black because I didn't change it. And then under control signal, uh, you can have normal or inverted, and I'm gonna invert it. And basically what that does is it takes the Y1, Y2, and it changes them. Uh, if I've got a Y1 signal and it normally is opening the actuator, if I click inverted, now 24 volts on the Y1 would cause it to close. So I've selected all of the items that I wanna select. It says right required. I'm gonna click right required. It brings down a little drop down there. I can either undo all of my settings and erase them, or I can select right. Now it is writing to the Bluetooth adapter. And if you were looking at the Bluetooth adapter, you'll see that it will turn blue as it's communicating to the actuator. The next thing I'd like to show you uh, is now that I've made these changes, if I scroll down, I can see uh, we've renamed the training. It's got a 50 second runtime, max position of 80%. Uh, the valve settings are regular because we're not on an L series. And the, I did invert the control signal. The next thing that I can take a look at is the diagnosis. That's the heartbeat in the bottom right. I click on that. And uh, again, installation, I select that drop down. I don't know the voltage source because we don't have it wired up. Uh, it's had 29 voltage failures. It's had uh, 88 hours operating time and active time of zero. I'm gonna click on operation. And what it's telling me is it's run open, uh, full open 19 times, full close 13 times. It's had 81 motor starts and it's had 49 changes of direction. The next one, uh, drop down I can select is system and actuator load, it's always been normal and mechanical overload, it's had zero. That's a pretty important bit of information. If I were calling into technical support and I was having some kind of a problem, uh, that's something that we might ask you or it might be something if you're having issues with a PR actuator, you can come in and look at uh, have there been any mechanical overloads? Uh, is the valve binding up? Is there something in the pipe that's causing it uh, not to fully actuate? Uh, is the uh, actuator twisted or is it not mounted correctly on top of the valve? So that's kind of pretty important information. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and back out of the iPhone and I'm gonna show you how to use the Android. And there's two ways that you can access the NFC chip on the PR actuator using the Android. With the Android, the near field communication is open. In the iPhone, it actually has near field communication, but for some reason, Apple doesn't make it available to the public. So if you have an Android, what you can do, go into your phone according to the manufacturer settings, activate the near field communication. I've gone into the Google Play Store and I have downloaded the Belimo Assistant app and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open that. And what's gonna come up is a screen that says scan device. And so now what I've gotta do is I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm gonna leave it. And so what it does is it scans the near field communication. I take it off of the actuator and I'm gonna see all of the exact same information and I'm gonna be able to do all of the same programming that I was able to do in the iPhone uh, because the app is exactly the same. Okay, so I can go ahead and make my changes when I'm ready to uh, write. So let's just say I will uh, change the runtime and we'll change it to 80 seconds and I am done. Write required, I'm gonna write. So now what I've gotta do is I've gotta take and place the phone back down on the actuator. It's going to read the near field chip. And what you might have to do is you might have to move the phone around a little bit until you locate the antenna. There is an antenna located in the back of the Android. And uh, so I've written to the, uh, the actuator and I'm done. So there's two ways you can use the Android. So you have the built-in NFC that comes on the Android. And then also what we can do is we can access the near field communications using the adapter, the Bluetooth adapter, the same one that we used for the iPhone. I'm gonna turn it on. 
I'm going to place it on uh, the actuator over the near field communications. I'm going to open up the Belimo assistant. And what it's doing is it recognizes that there's a converter turned on. I'm going to go to connection. And uh, what it's showing is there are two converters within range. So earlier we had used the uh, ABCDEF for the iPhone, and I just happened to grab a different one. And uh, the name of that one is Tech Support. I'm going to click back. And what it does automatically, it's communicating with the uh, Bluetooth adapter. And everything from here on out is exactly the same. It's the same way that you use the Android. The app is the same, whether it's for the Android or for the iPhone. And just as an example, I'll show you, I can go to the gear setting and uh, runtime is currently 80 seconds. It's turning orange and I'm just gonna change it to 90 seconds. I'm gonna select done, write required, write, and you see it blinks uh, with a little bit of a blue light. That's when it's communicating and reprogramming the actuator. And I'm done. And so if I look, it has changed from a runtime of 80 seconds to 90 seconds. And that's it. I'm now done. I can go ahead and use the actuator. And I am finished. All right, thanks for watching the video on how to use the near field communications on the PR actuator. We also have additional videos on how to wire the PR actuator and also on how to use the conduit connector and help maintain NEMA 4X. If you have any questions about the Belimo PR actuator or any other Belimo product, you can call Belimo at 1-800-543-9038. You could also go to www.belimo.us or you can send us an email at technicalsupport at us.belimo.com. Thanks for watching the video and be sure to like the Belimo YouTube channel.